I'm Gary, and this is Coasting with Culture. I like to combine theme park visits and riding roller coasters with various cultural experiences around the world. After visiting four countries in South America over the past few weeks, there was one more to go, and that's the nation of Argentina. The first few days focused on short stops in Mendoza and Cordoba, before spending the remaining time around Buenos Aires. Both cities provided opportunities to explore the sites and to gain a few new coaster credits. When heading to the gate for my flight to Buenos Aires, there was something that had slipped my mind about Santiago's airport. Aerolinas Argentinas uses gates in one of the furthest parts of the airport, leading to plenty of walking, even with the help of several moving sidewalks. I forgot how huge this airport is. I think by the time this is done, I'm going to have walked to Buenos Aires. Tonight, I'll be catching the flight over to Buenos Aires, and then it'll be about a six hour time frame from landing in Buenos Aires to switch airports and then go to the other airport in Buenos Aires and then fly over to the city of Mendoza. And when we get to Mendoza, we're going to go search for a coaster and do some exploring. Because of the timing of this flight and the need to transfer from Buenos Aires International Airport to their domestic airport in the city for the next morning's flight, this wouldn't be a very restful flight beyond a few weeks in flight. Just like a few days before, it was a late arrival to Buenos Aires, only this time I was staying in the country instead of catching a flight to another one. If you find yourself needing a ride over to the domestic airport in the city, there is a bus you can ride for a transfer that's cheaper than taking a taxi. The domestic airport had an interesting arrangement as the gates you went to was based on which direction your flight was heading, and this division continued going into security. This flight to Mendoza was booked through Aerolinas Argentinas, but the plane had the Austral name on the side, which had been the second largest domestic carrier in Argentina, until eventually coming under the control of the larger Aerolinas Argentinas. Taxiing to the runway helps you realize that this airport is pretty well locked into the area with the development around it. Upon landing, it was time to catch a cab into the city for some morning exploring. Since I was flying to Cordoba in the afternoon, I needed to store my bag somewhere, and the airport didn't have any lockers or storage, but I did find that the bus terminal in the city did, so I kept it there before going for a walk around town.
Mendoza is a very charming city with tree-lined streets and an aspect that I had never seen before in the design of the roads, which involved open water drainage systems with small bridges to switch from the sidewalk to the road. They also had more common water features of other cities like this fountain that sat on this gorgeous pedestrian plaza known as Garibaldi Street. This led right into Plaza Independencia, a park space that was created with the relocation of Mendoza's city center after a devastating earthquake in 1861. This large plaza has four smaller plazas that surround it and can be used as a retreating space in the event of another massive quake. Today, the plaza hosts concerts, craft fairs, and is surrounded by several other popular attractions while hosting the Municipal Art Museum. Going further into the city, I spent a bit of time inside Mercado Central, a place where the locals can purchase their meats and produce or enjoy a meal from a local cook. With the last bit of time I had in Mendoza, I headed over to another shopping location, although I wasn't here for the various stores inside. It was the opportunity to gain another coaster credit, courtesy of Neverland. Neverland is a chain of family entertainment centers in Argentina, which features smaller rides in arcade games. Some of the locations even feature a coaster to ride, like this location with its Zamperla powered coaster, simply known as Roller Coaster. As there were a few locations on my itinerary, I asked if their card for individual ride and game payments would work at their other locations, and they confirmed it would, so I kept it for later use after getting a ride on the first coaster of the trip in Argentina. Wine may be what brings a lot of people to Mendoza, but I came here for this coaster. And now that I've got it, it's time to head back to the airport to make my way up to Cordoba. Having a successful first stop of exploring and gaining a new coaster credit in Mendoza, it was back to the airport for a flight to continue to the city of Cordoba. Since this flight was short and in the early afternoon, there was plenty of time to get to the Airbnb for the next two nights and to do some exploring and searching for coasters before the end of the night. Once I was settled into the Airbnb, I took a stroll around the city, with the first destination being Cordoba's Nuevo Central Shopping Mall. 
And just like the mall earlier in the day, this was for a Neverland location for a hopeful coaster. But when walking around inside this one, it appeared that it was remodeled and the coaster that was listed on Roller Coaster Database for this location was no longer here. While it's disappointing to have another unsuccessful coaster stop, there was more exploring to do, heading to Parque Sarmiento, which opened in 1911 and was named for former Argentine president Domingo Sarmiento. It's located near the National University of Cordoba, featuring a zoo, art museum, and natural science museum. It's also where you can find the city's amusement park, Super Park. It didn't take long after entering the park to find a coaster to ride, which happened to be a model that was quite common on this trip. So I see the wacky worm here and I think to myself, cool, I found the coaster. But then I started to think about the map of the park and it showed what looked like a mouse version of it in a different spot. Something didn't quite add up about this. As luck would have it, this park had a second coaster. I've seen multiple wacky worm style coasters at fairs and carnivals before, but this was the first time seeing two of them in the same stationary amusement park. Turns out this is the one that was already listed on Roller Coaster Database. The other one is a nice bonus credit. Yes! If you're hoping to get more than a pair of coasters, there are several other rides in this park. From the Tagata style ride found at many other South American parks and carnivals, to the more widely seen flat rides like the Paratrooper. They also had what looked like a newer version of the classic Caterpillar ride. If it wasn't actually newer, the park did a great job of maintaining They also had a haunted dark ride that seemed like it would be worth a spin. Either this thing is going to be super tacky like a lot of these dark rides can be, or it's going to be amazing. It was tacky, but it was fun.
sometimes these smaller local parks are really charming. Super Park's not the biggest place. It's not going to have the most thrilling rides, but there's something really neat about coming here for an evening out under the nice cool skies of Cordoba here in Argentina. So definitely worth coming to check out if you are coming for the credits. After heading out from the park, I enjoyed an evening stroll back to the Airbnb to call it a night before having some time in the morning to explore the city. The daylight that came with the change in days made it easier to appreciate the architecture of the city, including the avenue built to either side of Rio Cañada. There were also several fascinating sculptures around the city. I was also fascinated to see this advertisement for the Netflix movie The Two Popes, especially as it was placed right outside of Argentina's oldest church in continuous service, the Cathedral of Cordoba, located on the site of Plaza San Martín. The plaza's west side is lined by the cathedral and the Cordoba Cabildo. Both buildings were named as historic monuments back in 1941. One of the neat features for both buildings is the outline of the side facing the plaza that's placed on the ground, giving a sort of shadow appearance. The plaza dates all the way back to the 1500s and regularly hosts markets and fairs. In the center of the plaza is a monument with General San Martin facing in the direction of Mendoza, where his army would begin their campaign into Chile and Peru to gain independence from Spanish rule. The church was inaugurated in 1709 and had gone through an extensive renovation from 2007 to 2009. It isn't as large as some of the other cathedrals seen on this trip, but even with a simpler look on the outside, it has much to see inside. Within the gate and before entering the front door, you'll find the tombs of some of the prominent citizens of Cordoba, including General Jose Maria Paz and his wife Margarita. Paz was a military figure of Argentina during both their fight for independence and the Argentine Civil War. I saw this sign when entering which led me to think that photography may not be allowed inside. However, there was another that specified that they didn't want flash photography and for you to remain quiet while doing so, out of respect for those who may be here for prayer. And boy am I glad they allowed the use of cameras inside, as it has a gorgeous interior. There were some very detailed altars on the sides of the building. But one piece that really stood out to me was this representation of the birth of Jesus Christ, which showed the manger in an elevated position as the onlookers looked up toward him. This piece also features a selection of Bible verses written on the side. While the outside of the cathedral is simpler, the interior is far more ornate with its Baroque design as was popular in the 17 and 1800s in Europe, with Spain having colonial power over Argentina while the church was under construction. Several parts of the ceiling have incredibly detailed trim and paintings, especially in the dome near and above the main altar and one piece located directly above the pews. 
While I really enjoyed this morning exploration of the city, there were some more places I planned to visit outside of Cordoba, and one of them led to an experience that wasn't part of the original trip plan. Thank you for watching this Coast with Culture video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below to see future videos here on YouTube like these ones which you may enjoy as well. Additional content can be found at coastingwithculture.com and you can also follow Coasting with Culture on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for announcements, previews, and updates. Thanks again for watching and until next time, take care and safe travels.